welcome, welcome, everybody. Mock Draft Live. We're back at it again this year. Colleen Wolf, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, DJ, I have to know, were you able to keep the draft necklace? Sometimes you do things you regret. And uh, <laughs> that, would be, that would be a pretty good example of that being the case. Yeah. You know what? That's going to live on forever. And I'm yes. so thankful <laughs> yes. for that. <laughs> it's DJ's day here on NFL Network. It is his mock draft 3.0, the first draft since, or the first drop since free agency started. So a lot of moving parts. You can check out the entire mock draft up right now at NFL.com. But let's start right at the top. The Panthers, they didn't trade all the way up to get like an offensive guard. Yeah, no, it's not going to be a guard, Colleen. That's a good call. Uh, to me, Bryce <laughs> Young is the pick. And I don't think we're going to know when they're on the clock even who this pick is but I'm gonna trust my instincts I, I think this is the best quarterback in the draft class he does everything at a very high level we can debate the size and that's a real discussion uh, but to me you take the best player that's Bryce Young and uh, you know Frank Reich it's not usually his style to go with a shorter quarterback so we'll see what he ends up doing let's move to the second overall pick and it's another quarterback CJ Stroud goes to the Texans DJ yeah I think these guys go one two in whatever order uh, Stroud to me Look, he, he's the best pure thrower. You saw that at the combine, just the way the ball comes out of his hand. He can make every type of throw. Uh, what he did against Georgia was a strong closing argument. The Houston Texans don't get the number one overall pick due to that win late oh. this season, but they do get a franchise quarterback. And we'll get a chance to see C.J. Stroud on Wednesday at his pro day. Bucky? Look, he's a big-time player. Both of these guys have separated themselves from the rest of the guys. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out after their pro day. Okay, skipping ahead to the fourth pick, another quarterback off the board the Colts they grab Anthony Richardson who made a splash at the combine yeah if upside is your thing this is your guy because he has the highest ceiling of anybody in this draft class he's not a finished product but I do think his athleticism and his legs is going to allow time for him to develop further as a passer uh, there is a lot to get excited about with Anthony Richardson so quarterback heavy at the top of this draft three quarterbacks in the first four picks why uh, are you going Bryce Young though over CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson yeah yeah, I think this is a fun debate, and I'm sure this is a debate that's taking place there in, in the draft room there with the Carolina Panthers. But I, want, I can go to the video, and I'll show you, you know, my, my case here for Bryce Young as the top quarterback. And it's pretty simple. Let's go with the four Ps here. Let's start with pocket awareness. He's got an unbelievable pocket sense to be able to climb and maneuver around and create space. How about the poise under pressure? This Bama offensive line was not as good as it's been in some of the previous years. He got hit a lot, but the eyes stay up and he delivers the ball accurately. That leads to placement. This is Julius Brent's talented corner from Kansas State in perfect coverage. You can't be better than that, but a perfect throw beats him. And the last P here is the playmaking. This is against LSU. You get some pressure, buy time, eyes up, and make a play down the field. So he literally checks every box. And if you go back and look at the notes on him and you compare it to Joe Burrow, I know the size mm -hmm. is different, but the skill set, Buck, is eerily similar. It is eerily similar. And I'm going to continue on the theme with the P's because okay. this debate when it comes to the quarterback comes down to the performer, which is Bryce Young, versus the prototypes would be C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson, respectively. The thing about Bryce Young, when you watch the tape, you see this guy dazzle time after time after time, late game situations, two-minute situations, third down, when it's money down, he comes through. And so you love that part of it. And even though you see C.J. Stroud and you love the things he can do as a passer, man, there's something different about Bryce Young. And so that's why there's a bit of a fascination about him, even though he doesn't have those prototypical dimensions. It felt like in big games, every time there was a play to be made, he made it. And he would have had some more wins in his column this year, Buck. He just to get the football back. Yes. Look at the LSU game. He didn't get a chance to get another opportunity in overtime. Mm. They go for two, the game's over. So, Bucky, is this does this align with your quarterback rankings, having C.J. Stroud the second best in the class? Now, Colleen, is it close? If I, if I tell you that, then that would ruin my top five list that comes out later this week. Oh! However, I would tell you, there is definitely some debate at the top of the board between Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Those guys have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. But now it's... What do you want to hit your wagon to long term? This guy's the most natural thrower that you will find in C.J. Stroud. Make all the throws. The way that he played in the Georgia game and that playoff game really opened up some, to some eyes about his creativity. But then you go back and you see all that tape that Bryce Young has. 
I don't think you can go wrong at the top. It's just a matter of are you going to throw out some of those traditional norms and be okay with an undersized quarterback as the number one overall pick as opposed to the guy, the prototype, that has been number one overall so many times during the draft. What people don't know about Bucky and myself, Colleen, is that we also have a marketing company. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay, cool. So Tell me more about when, that. When the first pick is announced, yes. the papers the next day in Carolina are going to say the price is right. <laughs> oh, no. we've, already been, we've already been consulted on this. That's the headline. That's just <laughs> That's just been in the back pocket. Right in the back pocket. He's waiting. Yes. Wow. Okay, so Anthony Richardson, riddle me this, jumped 14 spots from your last mock. Walk us through, uh, do you think he'll go that high, and should he go that high? Well, I think there's a mystery with him of where he's going to go. I think he does have a broad range of where he can go in this draft class. But I know in talking to guys around the league, general managers, head coaches, they are intrigued by what this could look like if it all comes together for Anthony Richardson. We've never seen a guy at this size move like he does. He's got an unbelievable arm. Now, he's further developed as a runner than he is as a thrower at this point in time. But, man, if you're going to look at all these guys as lottery tickets, Buck, he has the highest payout. If you hit on him, you hit big. You do hit on him. You, you hit big. He's benefiting from a few different things. One, Justin Fields went for over 1,000 yards as a rusher last year. Even though it was chaotic for the Chicago Bears, he was able to move that offense with his legs. Secondly, Jalen Hurts' steady progression over his time with the Philadelphia Eagles. Became into the league, really regarded as a runner, has become a more complete pocket passer. That has enabled the Philadelphia Eagles to go to the Super Bowl as teams begin to use their imagination, maybe they can envision Anthony Richardson having a similar trajectory to those two aforementioned quarterbacks. Do you see that transformation happening as quickly as it did for Jalen Hurts? I don't know, man. Jalen Hurts is, look, he's, he's a unicorn when it comes to his work ethic and stuff. But I think if you're going to gamble, you're gambling on the upside because the Jalen Hurts comparison also leads into the Josh Allen comparison, which helped the Buffalo Bills become a very relevant force in the AFC. If you squint and you see those things and the traits that Anthony Richardson has, it can lead you to believe, hey, I'm a bank on the person, bank on the upside, that he can be a star at this league. It matters where you go. I think that's the lesson mm -hmm. with Jalen Hurts. You couldn't have gone to a better place. And that's not just the talent and the players around you, but it's the support staff, the coaches, to be able to get the best out of you and for you to develop. I, I just want to give you one scenario, though, guys. If you imagine you're a defensive end and you're unblocked and you've got Jonathan Taylor, who's getting the fake from Anthony Richardson, and you're like, is Jonathan Taylor taking this? Mm -hmm. Or is Mr. Uh -huh. 443 at 244 pounds Anthony Richardson taking in this. Have fun. Good luck. That's a nice visual for Colts fans. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you're tired of all the quarterback talk, I am so sorry because it's not going to stop. Pro Day season, it's here, and NFL Plus is your home for all the top quarterback sessions. We've got Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and Will Levis all coming up this week live on NFL Plus. We want to rebrand this as well with our marketing company. We're going to okay. call this a Pro Day party Ooh. because we have free agency <laughs> frenzy. We need to spice up this title a little bit. Pro Day. Palooza? Oh, there we go. <laughs> you know? All right, let's get to some guys that aren't quarterbacks. Give me the good. Give me the good. Under immediate pressure off the edge and cannot escape. Will Anderson. Oh, my gosh. Give me the good. Can he get it off quick enough with Will Anderson coming off the edge? They sack him again. Will Anderson, Jr. And just like that, the first defensive player off the board, Will Anderson to the Cardinals. Yeah, he gets sandwiched in between the quarterbacks here with the third overall pick. I think Arizona could end up trading out if somebody wants to get ahead of the Colts for that third quarterback. But I do think he's the favorite to be the first defender off the board, and he is a major need there for the Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. No, major league, big time player coming off the edge. Uh, a lot of people want a flashy player that you're taking up at the top, but he checks off all the boxes. And when you add the football character, you feel good about the player that you're taking in the top five. He's not only going to deliver that kind of performance, but he's going to give you the leadership characteristics that you also want. Yeah, to me, he's high floor, high ceiling. And I can go to the video and show you what I'm talking about here because you're talking about a player that's complete. He can do everything you want to do, whether it's against the pass or against the run. He's very dynamic, he's explosive, and he's polished. Give you an example of that here coming off, able to lay, raise the wrist there, get it, that hand control. He wins that hand battle. You overset against him, he's got the feel and the instincts. He's going to counter you inside, little inside swim. He gets home there. So as a pass rusher, he has a complete repertoire. How about against the run? Front side, stack tackles, no problem, set the edge. Back side, you want to leave him unblocked. With B. John Robinson, he's going to close the back door and make the play. So really a complete player. If you're looking for somebody with very few holes who's got a high floor and a high ceiling, 
Uh, that to me is Will Anderson in this draft. Well, I mean, look, we're in the midst of the World Baseball Classic where you see a lot of teams win games with singles and doubles. At the top of the board, Will Anderson is a double all day, stand up on base. You hit it. He's not going to mess it up. He's going to be a solid player. You cannot go wrong with the Alabama standout. Especially after the Cardinals lost Zach Allen in free agency and J.J. Watt retired. That defensive line needs some love. So, DJ, Will Anderson, he was your third defender off the board in your last mock draft. So, take me through how that changed. Well, you look at a guy like Jalen Carter and where he lands is going to be interesting. I thought he was the best player, the most talented football player in the draft. I had him going five here to the Seattle Seahawks. I don't think he gets out of the top ten. I think Philadelphia will be the stopgap for him there at number ten. Uh, but it's a difficult player to place due to what transpired off the field. On the field, there's no questions about him. No, no question. He's a dominant, disruptive player at the point of attack. You have to be comfortable with the character stuff. So that's why it's important that you're doing all the background stuff. But you talk about a dominant player on the inside. We have seen how defenses, elite defenses, have that dominant fixture on the interior. He is one of those guys that can be a pillar for a franchise for a long time. So Jalen Carter to Seattle. Um, we saw that. So just to reset, it's uh, SEC heavy in the top five. A couple Alabama guys going in the top three. The Colts, they get their quarterback in Anthony Richardson. And Jalen Carter finds a home in Seattle. Well, can you believe this? The draft just over a month away. Find out where the future stars of the league will land. It all kicks off Thursday, April 27th in primetime from Kansas City. Watch the 2023 NFL Draft presented by Verizon on NFL Network and NFL Plus. Let's get back to DJ's latest mock draft where lots of defenders go in the top 10, including the sixth overall pick. Cornerback Devin Witherspoon joins that Lions secondary. Often asked who my favorite player to watch is in this draft. He, he's it's in, him? He's in the discussion as one of the best players to just, just kick your feet up on the desk and enjoy watching his tape. He's so instinctive and such a good all-around football player. I've seen some comparisons. Comparisons to Darius Slay, is that, do you see any of that at I all? I think he's got a little more Denzel Ward to him coming Ooh. out of Ohio State. That's who he reminded me of. Okay. So at seven, DJ has the Raiders taking edge rusher Tyree Wilson to join Max Crosby in Vegas. Yeah, Chandler Jones, they paid him the money last year. They were hoping they were going to get more out of him. It just didn't happen. So to me, this is getting a little younger there to compliment Max Crosby. And you talk about length, athleticism. Uh, Tyree Wilson has that in a big, big way. Okay, nice fit for Patrick Graham's defense there. And and just like that, another defender gone. The Falcons take Christian Gonzalez, cornerback coming off a breakout year at Oregon. Yeah, transfer from Colorado. And I would not be shocked if he was the first corner taken. I do think both those corners, Witherspoon and Gonzalez, end up going in the top 10, two of the cleaner players in the entire draft. So then the Eagles, they're on the clock at 10. And they take an edge rusher, Lucas Van Ness. With all my heart, I want them to take B. John Robinson, the running okay. back from Texas. I just know they <laughs> never do it, Buck. I try to talk them into it. I don't think it's happening. Uh, but Van Ness is a gifted pass rusher, can rush outside as well as slide inside and rush over a guard. All right, so Jalen Carter at five started a mini run on defenders in DJ's mock draft. Two corners going to Detroit and Atlanta. The Raiders and Eagles both adding some pass rushers with Tyree Wilson and Lucas Van Ness. And the Bears, they trade out of that number one spot and add some support for Justin Fields up front with Peter Skoronsky. So let's go back and talk about the corners, though. Devin Witherspoon over Christian Gonzalez. Um, tell me a little bit more. Well, this is something that Bucky and I always talk about about mm -hmm. is, is when you're looking at the traits of a player, the, the height, weight, speed of Christian Gonzalez versus the actual performance that you see there with Devin Witherspoon. Devin Witherspoon, he doesn't get beat. He, he drives on balls from off. He can be physical and feisty in press coverage. You want him to close and support against the run. He has some blow up shots. He's just a more consistent, better football player, Buck. But man, Christian Gonzalez with the height, weight, speed, the fluidity that he possesses, He's got the highest ceiling of what he can be. Two very talented players. They do it in a very similar fashion. I think with Witherspoon, you see a guy who is nasty on the edge, very physical, tough, great instincts and awareness, uh, always around the ball. And he can move him inside and play the nickel. Gonzalez also shows up on tape. Outstanding ball skills and awareness, can play man or zone. Uh, you can't necessarily go wrong. I do believe the edge may go the physicality of Witherspoon is a little different than Gonzalez, even though I'm sitting here saying that both 
guys are top 10 talents. Both guys are worthy of consideration as being the number one corner off the board. And we haven't seen a first round corner out of Oregon in quite some time. I think Alex Molden, maybe oh, Elijah oh, Molden's nice. dad. Way. So it's I'm been back. a minute. But you know what? What else here? No receivers taken in the top 10. But the Titans, they are on the clock at 11, and they're about to change that. Here is Smith and Jiggle. Oh, what a move! Coming around, and he finds space. Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. He is shifty, isn't he? Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. Touchdown. So a record six wide receivers went in the top 20 a year ago. DJ, only four in your first round right now. And it starts with that guy that we just saw, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Then the Seahawks go, Chargers go back-to-back -back receivers with picks 20 and 21. And the Bills, they snag Quinton Johnston out of TCU. All right, so tell me a little bit more about Jigba. Well, to me, there's not a lot that separates these players. They're just different types of players, different flavors, so to speak. Jackson Smith and Jigba, I can go to the video and show you, you know, what I really like about his game. He is a he's a pure route runner. He's somebody that lives in the slot. If you go back to 2021, and this is that Rose Bowl that he absolutely went off in against Utah. But that's where his production comes from. He loves to work in the middle of the field. A lot of his production comes between the numbers. He's tough. He's got outstanding hands. You see him run through the ball right here. Again, working in that middle of the field. He's got a great awareness and feel, that instinct to work in space. He's not a, a true burner. He's not going to line up outside and run right by you. There's going to be plays like this where there's contested catches, but he can track it really well. He's got outstanding hands. And again, Buck, we always talk about it. It's those craftsmen, those route runners that translate really well to the next level. Even though I believe he's a slot only, this guy's going to have huge production at the next level. Huge production. The one common denominator between the wide receivers that have popped immediately, they all were dominant route runners. Outstanding in terms of their level of precision, the balance and body control that they display while running routes. This guy consistently creates separation. And what I love about him is he catches the ball over the middle field, he plucks it, and then he's dangerous with the ball in his hands. And so when you think about the wide receivers that dominate from day one, they're guys that can get open, they make the plays, and then they turn those small plays into big gains. Jackson Smith Enigma does that. Okay, so I'm excited to see JSN run um, at his pro day, but also... By the way, it very much sounds like a regional network. It uh, does. JSN, it does. <laughs> might as well Not be bad. a hockey game on JSN Not later bad. tonight. Not uh. <laughs> But how, do, how does he compare to the Buckeye receivers from last year? I mean, he's just like all those guys. All those guys can run. The one thing that I will say, the Buckeyes, Brian Hartline, their wide receiver coach now, offensive quarter, they've done a really good job of developing the players. I believe he's a day one player. He comes in, day one you put him in the lineup, he's going to make plays from that point. I would say those other guys are Ferraris, and he's more of a muscle car. Like okay. he's built more like a Brody. Yeah, he's built Isn't more a like Ferrari a running back. Muscle car? No, it's more of a luxury. Oh, more like, more more like, like okay, is, all right. He's more physicality, toughness. more finesse. With yeah, it. kind big of wheels, he, big he rims. He works in the mud, as we like to say. He's kind of a like mud. Flow masters on yeah. it, maybe. Oh. The, okay. So the Titans. By the way, go. these are these are three collective people who know nothing about cars. So didn't know that <laughs> Listen, already. I had a Trans Am when I was younger. <laughs> I had a Firebird. I had a Firebird. I love that. <laughs> okay, so the Titans, they go receiver at 11. More edge rushers off the board at 12 and 13. Uh, it's very on trend right now. But wait, this can't be right. Is this oh, yeah. a mistake? Oh, oh no. my God, a running back in the first round? Is that even allowed? It'll be Robinson to the second level and beyond. Touchdown. That's Bijan Robinson. Out into the open along the sideline. He's got Robinson to the end zone. What a sweet move. Robinson does it again. Welcome to the Patriots, Bijan Robinson. That's DJ's 14th overall selection. Yeah, he's my third overall player. So this is going oh, wow. to be a fascinating discussion of positional value. There is no debate about him as a football player. He's off the charts. Again, I think he's one of the five best players in the draft. I think he ended up having the best career of anybody in this draft. 
He's an easy guy to scout. And to me, the Patriots don't think like everybody else does, Buck. I think when the rest of the league is zigging, they've proven in the past they're willing to zag. A big-time player. And I think sometimes you have to grade the player for the talent that he possesses and displays. B. John Robinson is one of the best players in the draft. You see it. You've consistently seen it throughout his time at Texas. He deserves to be mentioned as they wanted the top five picks in the draft, even though his positional value will bring him down the board. Two areas that they stunk last year on offense in New mm -hmm. England, third down and in the red zone. You get Bijan Robinson out of the backfield against linebackers on third down, that's going to help. You get down inside the 5, 10 yard line, he's going to give you sevens instead of threes. And you think he's the only running back that'll go in the first round? I think there's another one that has first round ability in Gibbs out of Alabama, but I do think that this is the only one that will go in round one. Okay. This is a product of the, the position. People don't value the position, but he is an outstanding player. And when you put him in the right situation where the Patriots would be perfect, where you can hand him off, you can get the value out of him while he's still on their rookie contract. The last time the Patriots drafted a running back in the first round was Lawrence? Sony Michelle. Oh, Sony Michelle's hey! going to go back to Lawrence Maroney. Don't Lawrence forget Maroney. about Sony. <laughs> be careful that make MJD mad. You just bring up Lawrence Maroney. He, mm. Okay, good to know. Up. I will bring it up immediately as soon as I see him. Levis fires, throws a dart, lets it go, right on the money. Love the decision here by Will Levis. And Levis with the quarterback run. He'll have the first down and more. Easiest touchdown for Will Levis. Big shoes to fill in Tampa Bay, so get ready for the Will Levis Baker Mayfield training camp buzz, everybody, because DJ has the Bucks taking Levis at 19. Yeah, let's throw Kyle Trask in there as yes. well. Let's just have a three man battle royal here for the position. But, you know, look, you're looking at Will Levis. Wasn't healthy this year, and that makes it a difficult evaluation. You go back to 21 tape, you see the athleticism, the arm strength. They jump off the screen. Uh, just wanted to see him be a little more consistent this year. Maybe not take quite as many sacks, be a little safer with the football. Yeah, and Jason Light, he loves to talk up Kyle Trask. So I don't know what to believe anymore <laughs> if they end up taking him. And another quarterback drafted with a 23rd overall pick, Hendon Hooker going to the Vikings. Yeah, if he's not coming off of an injury, I think he's a lock as a first-round pick. You obviously have his age a little bit older. That's a factor as well. But the tape is so good. Even though it's a little different offense, kind of that old Baylor offense where they spread you out sideline to sideline. But accuracy, arm strength, athleticism, and then all the stuff off the field, off the charts. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins, one year left on his deal. We'll find out how that front office really feels. They've been doing a lot of homework on the quarterback. Class. That's super interesting. Okay, so we tried to make the quarterbacks the story last year, and we failed. <laughs> Only one guy went on night one. I don't think we need to force the quarterback talk, though, this time around. Five in your latest mock draft, but but an Aaron Rodgers-esque fall for Will Levis in the green room. So Levis dropped from seventh in your last mock to 19th. Yep. That's pretty significant. So what happened with him? Well, I'll, I'll get to that. I, I do want to show you what he looks like. Okay. Because I feel like when we talk about these guys, it's easier to show you what you like about him. And then we can discuss Let's start why. Start with the positive. Why, I like that. Exactly. Let's be positive Great. here. Uh, you look at, first of all, the arm strength. It, it jumps out when you see it. He's got kind of that three-quarter delivery. The ball jumps out of his hand. Tremendous torque, tremendous power. Shows you some ability here with the feet not lined up. That's the good side of it. Sometimes that can mm -hmm. impact his accuracy. Toughness, he will hang in there. He takes some huge shots playing in that conference behind a very suspect offense line. How about this hurdle? Get up in the air for me, Will. Get up Ooh. there. There's the mobility. You know, I love to see it. That's where you see some of the Josh Allen conversation take place because of what he can do as a runner, as an athlete. Now, there are far too many sacks that he takes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't secure the football, had some, some issues there with turnovers. So those are the things, Buck, when you're with a team, you can bring him in, you can sit down, and you can go through this stuff and try and figure it out. But those are some of the reasons why I think there's a chance he could slide. Although I don't do trades in these things, I think if he did start to slide a little bit, I think one of these teams would come up and get him. He's a nice mix. He's a blend of an old school quarterback with a new school game, meaning he has the size and the prototypical dimensions that you love in the old school. But the new school part of it is the Josh Allen stuff that you see. You see him move around. You see him run through contact. He breaks tackles. He has big time arm talent. And so it's the right environment. Can you find the right environment that will allow him to flourish? We saw that happen in Buffalo with Josh Allen. Brian Dayball did some things to really help him become a great player. Can somebody else kind of get up on the hood, tinker with it a little bit, and you come back a couple years, you have an outstanding quarterback? Because he does have some intriguing tools. Okay, so I have both sides of the coin here. Okay. But specifically the fit in yeah. Tampa Bay, how does that work? 
Well, you know, they have a couple quarterbacks, as we talked about mm -hmm. there, and Trask. Trask, we don't know what he can be. You know, I thought he, coming out of college, he didn't have nearly the skill set that Will Levis has. Will Levis is a much better athlete. Um, and then you look at Baker Mayfield. I feel like, you know, through these stops through his career, we kind of know what Baker Mayfield is. Feels very much like a bridge quarterback. And this is a new era for them. Mm -hmm. I know they brought back some key guys, some key veterans, but they need to think about what this roster looks like three to five years from now. And I think this could be their guy going forward. And if he does start to drift, I don't think they would be patient to sit and wait for him. I think you could see Tampa go up and get him. Mm -hmm. Well, when you think about a new offensive coordinator, Drew Canales coming over from Seattle. That Seattle system is very similar to what Sean McVay and those guys have done uh, with the Rams in terms of movement base, pocket passing, and all of that other stuff. It is a nice system for a quarterback who's athletic. There's a few different ways that you can use his athleticism to really benefit your offense and to make the game easier for him. Tampa Bay certainly has the pieces in place to do that. Plus, you can get some Cuban coffee down there in Tampa, and he can put his mayonnaise in there. <laughs> I still don't get that. How do you put mayonnaise in uh, coffee? Like, uh, oh, is that like Levis? the bulletproof coffee? Yeah, yeah, he, makes, he does. He throws a little mayonnaise cool. in there. It's good. Gross. Okay, okay. that go. sounds a little terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about the other quarterback we just mentioned, Hendon Hooker? He's a little bit older for a prospect, 25 years old. He's also coming off an ACL injury, so that's kind of brutal. How should teams evaluate him? I like him. I mean, when you watch the tape, he does a lot of things that you can project him to be a starting quarterback in this league. Yes, the age is consideration, but not really. When we think about quarterbacks, I mean, we still have Aaron Rodgers out here running around at 39, 40 years old, trying to play. Tom Brady is still kind of dancing. I know he's retired, but he was 45 years old. It doesn't matter at quarterback more so than other positions. You still get a quality player, a very mature leader. We talk about that position being a leadership position. He checks off a lot of boxes as a leader, and He's a really good player. 25 is the new 20. Yeah. Now, look at Tennessee and the success they had this year with Hen and Hooker. And you watch that Alabama game. It's not often you see Nick Saban's defense get carved up like a Thanksgiving turkey, but that's what Hen and Hooker did. I mean, it made it look easy. It was a track meet up and down the field. You got to be patient with him coming off the injury. But even with the age he's at right now, Buck, I mean, this guy's going to get a chance to be a 10-year mm -hmm. starter at the mm. next level. Okay. So we jumped ahead to Levis at 19, but I just want to back it up for a second here because you have Pittsburgh adding the tackle from Georgia. You've got a guy from Pittsburgh going to Detroit who go defense with both their first-round picks. And I know tight end is a position you absolutely love in this draft. It seems really deep, this class. So why Dalton Kincaid? Why is he your favorite? Well, he's, again, I talked about Witherspoon being one of my favorite players to uh -huh. watch. He's on the short list as well because Dalton Kincaid. I've got to see this full does, list. There's a, I've, I've got about five or six guys on okay. this. They're, they're just fun to watch. And what he does, his ability to create separation, he shows you that aspect of his game. And then buckets, the combat catches as well. So he can work in traffic, but he can also create space. Unique combination. Old school Commanders fan will remember a player, Chris Cooley. Oh, this oh, guy has a yeah. lot of Chris Cooley in his I game like in terms of that H-back, saw fans make plays, put the ball in the paint. Terrific pass catcher, one that's worthy of being in the middle of the first round. And Kincaid is not the only tight end in the first round here for DJ. Michael Mayer goes 29th to the Saints. This is a complete tight end, a different style than Kincaid. Kincaid is a little more suddenness, a little more urgency. This is about size, physicality, does it in the run game and then in the pass game. It's more about subtlety with him as a route runner and then just boxing guys out and playing basketball down the field. Mm. Okay, so the last time two tight ends went in the first round, it was TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant in 2019. So not a terribly long time ago, but Kyle Pitts is the only tight end since then to go in the first round. So what makes this class specifically so strong? And do you think they'll be able to hit sooner than traditionally is known for a rookie tight end? Yeah, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but this is the best tight end class in 10 years. Uh, that really? Doing this. Mm -hmm. So there's 11 guys that I gave starter grades to where I think they're going to be NFL starters. And I think that's a reason why, Buck, we could see some of these guys get pushed down the board because as much as we love these top four or five guys that carry first-round caliber grades, the sheer number of players, teams are going to say, well, I can get another one in the third or fourth round. I'm not going to take one in round one. It's the biggest mismatch position on the field from an offensive standpoint. There's so many different things that you can do with a good tight end. And because there are classifications, you have the wide tight end, which is the inline tight end you attach to the tackle. He can block, he can run routes and do all that stuff while also giving you the benefit in the running game. And then you have the flex tight end, which is the Dalton Kincaid types that you can split out wide and they can go one-on-one -on -one against linebackers and safeties and win. So many guys with so many different skills 
and they're the super athletes in this class. That's why we're celebrating this class of tight ends. It's remarkable. And I think Eric Bieniemy would like to have a uh, tight end coming from oh, Kansas yeah. City with Travis Kelsey. That guy was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I like that pick to the Commanders. Okay, moving on to the next couple of picks in your mock. We already hit on Hendon Hooker to the Vikings. I don't know how Dad's gonna feel about Joey Porter Jr. playing for Baltimore. I, I, I kind of did that just because I want the <laughs> I Ravens like and Steelers it, fans to just have at it on that one. <laughs> So this is what mock drafts are all about. Come on, it's great. You have to stir the pot. <laughs> um, all right, so you can feast your eyes on that right there. Well, we didn't see a whole lot from Mozzie Smith at the Combine, but he does sneak into round one in DJ's mock going to Dallas at 26. You're not going to find a more explosive, more athletic guy at that size in this draft class. It hasn't all come together yet. But this is a, a very talented player that goes to Dallas. Yeah, some an interior presence there can help out Micah Parsons on the edge as well. Now, Mozzie wasn't in your last mock, and neither was Will McDonald, who you have going to the Chiefs. Yeah, Will McDonald is a real bendy, loose edge rusher. He had an awesome week down in Mobile at the Reese's Senior Bowl. He's a little bit older as a prospect, but somebody that's as gifted and as polished a pass rusher as we have in this class. Well, so a couple new names here on DJ's latest mock. The Bengals traded for Orlando Brown, but still continue to fortify that offensive line for Joe Burrow with Darnell Wright, one of those new names. And have I mentioned there's been a lot of edge rushers taken. <laughs> These two make it seven total in a group that's just absolutely stacked. Can you get it off quick enough with Will Anderson coming off the edge? It's under immediate pressure off the edge and cannot escape. Will Anderson. Oh my gosh. Kyrie Wilson almost able to take the handoff. He was there so quickly. Feeling the pressure and is sacked. And that was Tyree Wilson. The leader of that defense. Nowhere to go. Miles Murphy makes the stop. Swarmed again. Sack Miles Murphy. He flushed him and sack him. Big Miles Murphy like a freight train. Of course, there's a lot of intrigue about who the quarterback will be at the top, but also important getting to the quarterback. But again, seven edge rushers feels like a lot, especially when you consider there were five in a strong round last year in uh, on night one. So we talked about Will Anderson earlier in the show. DJ, who's another guy that stands out to you at the position? Uh, to me, it's Nolan Smith. And I think coming out of Georgia, if he had been healthy this entire season, we'd be talking about him as a top 10 pick in this draft. He's that talented. All he did is go to the combine run a 4-3-9 if That's you're it. into that if, that, if that works for you. But somebody that also is strong and steady against the run, you combine that with what he has upside as a pass rusher. Uh, yeah, that, there's, there's a reason why the two teams in the Super Bowl last year were number one and two in sacks. D-line, you can't have enough of them. We're going to see a big run on these dudes. It's funny because you feel like Nolan Smith is underrated when you think about George and their prospect, but he was off the field because of injury. But when you see him show up at the combine and you go back and look at the tape, you see a remarkable athlete who has a lot of tools. If he puts it all together, he should be a dominant player on the edge for some team. Okay, so who is a guy that you're focusing on on the edge? Or do I have to wait for your top five to come? No, out? no, no. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you like a little thing. Like okay. Will McDonald from Iowa State is a guy that you have to keep your eye on. DJ talked about him being bendy and explosive off the edge. He has a bag of tricks that allows him to consistently get to the quarterback. And the one thing that you cannot talk enough about when it comes to edge rushers, effort. Energy, relentless, pursuit to the quarterback. He is going to win on second and third effort, and that is going to give him a chance to be a consistent double-digit sack artist for the edge in this league for a long I time. talked to his coach, Matt Campbell, and said he came in as a freshman. He was about 207 pounds, and you can play up to four games before you have to redshirt him. He goes out in his first game and had a sack at 207 pounds. Like, did we let this guy play the whole year? He's only 207 <laughs> pounds, but nobody seems to be able to block him. Wow. And, hey, if he goes to Kansas City, that would be back-to-back -back years that they take an edge guy mm -hmm. in the first round after taking the Greek Freak last year. George Karloftis, who had a pretty good rookie season, second on the team in sacks. And, of course, they lost Frank Clark as well. So that is a need for them. All right, so the Raiders, speaking of that division, they signed their new man, Jimmy G, last week. Coming up, we're diving into the teams whose needs have shifted the most since the start of free agency. Well, the NFL draft just over a month away, and a lot of teams' needs will change between now and then. Plenty of them have already changed. Last week was absolutely wild. We're on the eve of free agency, so. Well, let's just say the offseason begins today. The Panthers now control the draft. Sources say they have traded up from the number nine overall pick 
all the way to number one. Derek Carr agreeing to a contract with the New Orleans Saints. Ooh, the Chicago Bears are signing Tremaine Edmonds, the star linebacker formerly of the Buffalo Bills. Jimmy G headed to the Raiders after six years with the San Francisco 49ers. It is a blockbuster trade. The New York Giants acquiring star tight end Darren Waller. Orlando Brown is on his way to the Bengals. The Lions are signing former Bears running back David Montgomery. Javon Hargrave is going to the San Francisco 49ers for four years, $84 million. Breaking news here, the Cowboys are releasing Ezekiel Elliott. It's official now in Miami. The Dolphins have announced their trade with the Rams for safety Jalen Ramsey. I'll be back on the air tomorrow waiting on Aaron. What if, there's nothing you could say. There's nothing you could say that could make it better. You're right. Other than that it's over. <laughs> we love free agency frenzy. Can't wait to do it again next year. Now, though, we're going to do a little mock versus mock. Mm. So, DJ's 2.0 against his 3.0. Of course, Jets fans are still waiting on Aaron Rodgers, but plenty of teams have made plenty of moves that might have had an impact on some of the changes that we've seen in this mock here. The Raiders, they signed Jimmy G, so they go Tyree Wilson instead of a quarterback at seven. The Eagles, they keep both of their corners, so they go elsewhere on defense. And then the Titans, they signed former Eagle Andre Dillard, and the Giants signed a couple receivers, plus, you know, the trade for Darren Waller. So DJ went with Joe Tipman instead at 25. You got to be flexible. You have to adapt. Things are fluid. <laughs> things are moving. But DJ, Obviously, these needs, they change as we work our way through free agency. But which pick was the most glaring to you when you went back and did this second mock, this third mock, I should say, um, that you had to go back and change? AK, where did you make a mistake? Yeah, well, I, to me, it's Vegas. Like, mm -hmm. you look at the Raiders, and that had been an obvious quarterback landing spot. Now, I don't think that they're completely, you know, zero chance that they take a quarterback. But they did sign Jimmy Garoppolo. He has the familiarity there. You feel like he has the support. When you have a head coach and general manager who know you going back to New England, I, it feels like they, they're going to give Jimmy a little bit of runway here. Give him a little opportunity. Uh, see if he can't put together a nice stretch of years here with the Raiders. So that definitely impacted my mock draft. Instead, I went to the defensive line for them there instead of quarterback. It makes sense. If you're the Las Vegas Raiders, you have to understand that you need a quarterback, a right now quarterback, to be able to compete in this division. Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, Pat Mahomes, you're not going to necessarily be able to close the gap with a rookie quarterback. So how shocked would you be if they did take a quarterback? You know, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked, and I wouldn't even be shocked if the one that they really like gets to three. So if there's, you know, one of those top four quarterbacks, if the one that the Raiders love happens to be, you know, one of the guys that doesn't go one or two, I think that third pick with the Arizona Cardinals is in play. And I think that's in play with the Raiders. I think that's in play with the Seahawks at mm. five. I wouldn't sleep on any of those teams trying to get up there and see if they can get their quarterback. We normally see it in this draft. It's, it's about the quarterbacks. We can talk about the blue chip talent, but it's the quarterback that drives the trade market. And so if one of those guys unexpectedly slips and is available at three, yes, you'll see some movement up the board. Okay, so when you look back years past, like yeah. what really stands out to you of things that you forecasted, the zigging when then teams have zagged? Well, I, I'll go to personal experience, and Buck has been there as well. When you're a scout and you're out at pro days, it is pro day season right now. We still need a better name. I know. Uh, we don't have it yet. Uh, but when you're out at pro days and you've been looking uh, on cross checks, which are what we do in scouting during this time of year, they'll give you a position, and you watch all those players in the draft at that specific position. And, Buck, we've been there, and your position, you're like, we don't have a guy. We're going to draft one. I yep. love this guy in the second, third round. I'm out at the pro day. I'm timing 40s. And then you, you get find out, wait, oh. we just signed three defensive tackles. Yeah. Man, taking this guy like it changes everything inside the personnel department yeah it's, it's, it's really hard and that's the one thing about like the mock drafts when it when it comes to it you're trying to jump in the body of another person a general manager and try and think how this team would do it and so some of the stuff that you do in mock drafts is creating fodder and conversation and debates other stuff is realistically trying to connect the dots to figure out which player makes the most sense for the team but at the end of the day you really don't know because all it takes is a last minute signing to completely change anything that happens in your mock draft. And for the prospects, everyone wants to be a first-round guy. Everybody oh, yeah. wants to go on that Thursday night of draft. But there's seven rounds, so there's <laughs> plenty of time. And when you look at your list, who is someone that you left out of that night one that could maybe sneak in? 
Yeah, to me, Darnell Washington, the big mm. tight end from Georgia, who's, you know, the, use, the word freak is used a lot in scouting, maybe overused. This, Especially this time of year. In this case, it's accurate because you don't see guys this size move around like he does. I thought he caught the ball really well at the combine. He had the, the catch of the weekend, really, with the one-handed grab down there in the red zone. He's like a sixth offensive lineman, Buck. But again, I think the depth of the tight end class could cause a first-round player like this, who's in my top 32 overall players in my ranking, but could cause a player like this to slide out of round one. You know what I love that Kirby Smart did? Kirby Smart knows that this guy's a sixth offensive lineman, but he gave him a single digit to make him feel good about himself. <laughs> but really what he is is a moving <laughs> offensive tackle that can really control the edges in the run game. Yes, he can catch the ball and do some of those things. A team is going to benefit by having a big player like that that can dominate on edges in the run game. Have you ever seen a, a moving billboard? Like you're driving down the highway <laughs> and they put a billboard on the back of like a truck. It's like a moving billboard. Very distracting. Yeah, that's him. Uh, if you watch him running down the seam. He's just a big billboard. Um, how about Bucky? What about you? Who do you see slipping? Who's right on the bubble there? Who's uh, right on the edge? I think DJ round? mentioned Jameer Gibbs from Alabama is a first round talent, but he probably will not hear his name called on day one. But when you watch the way that he plays the game, he can run inside and outside. He has juice, the ability to take it the distance, but also catches the ball out of the backfield. And so when you think about some of the running backs that have had success, Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara, guys that can make it happen in a variety of different ways, he fits the bill. He falls into that category. He should be a first-round talent, but he'll come off the board somewhere on day two. And as somebody who has two first names in Daniel Jeremiah, mm. to me, the comp for him is Jamal Charles. And <laughs> look at what Jamal Charles did during his career. I think you can see a similar type impact from Jameer Gibbs. It's also pretty impressive that he led Alabama in catches as a running back. Now, he was their best receiver. If they would have just lined him up at receiver, he would have been their best receiver last year. Good to know. Well, I mean, you know, no pressure, Bucky, but you have oh, your okay, mock coming out plan. next week, and I hope it's as good. I uh, hope it's as entertaining. Well, I'm a, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at all the comments on DJs, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to listen to the one crowd. Of us. <laughs> I'm going to listen to the crowd, and I'm going to let the crowd move me, and maybe we'll see a different mock draft when I have my opportunity to do Okay, so that's perfect. So, you guys, you have to go to NFL.com. Leave comments. I think you can. Oh leave no, no, comments. no! Tweet at DJ, oh. and I will see. Oh, yeah, okay, I will see those comments. So at move the sticks. Um, just tweet him. That. Let him know. It'll really help Bucky out, and it'll help it'll us help out me. for our next show <laughs> next week. Come back, join us. It's gonna be great. Until then, uh, listen to Move the Sticks podcast. Yeah, come on, let's go. A lot of great stuff there. Come on. Later.